I'm Dave McQuaid with Vantage Point Marketing. I'm the Vice President of Creative and Digital there. And uh, Vantage Point is uh, based in Greenville, South Carolina, just a little ways down the road. If you haven't been, um, please come sometime when it's sunny, preferably. We've got a great downtown that uh, we enjoy very much, and we're just on the outside of that downtown area. Vantage Point is a B2B marketing company almost exclusively. We've been in business for about 20 years, and we have national and global clients. Uh, some of which you may be familiar with, big clients like BMW, Michelin, Saya, and uh, for any of you who have passed these trucks on the road and wondered how do you pronounce that and do they make salsa, no, it's Saya, and they're an LTL trucking company. Uh, BMW in Greenville makes uh, the sport utility vehicles and we handle uh, their internal communications for them, including in-plant signage. Uh, Michelin, we handle uh, some of the marketing for their agricultural tires. And Saya, you probably have seen but may not be as familiar with, but they do deliveries, um, LTL delivery to companies that you are familiar with, such as Benjamin Moore, Starbucks, and Lowe's, among many, many others. But we have a number of other clients that you may not be as familiar with um, because, as is traditional in B2B marketing, they aren't big tip-of-the-tongue consumer names. Uh, companies like TNS Brass, S&D Coffee and Tea, based here in Concord, uh, one of our sponsors today. Thank you very much, S&D. Uh, Scotsman Ice, Nason, uh, makes uh, switches and other components. D&W Fine Pack. And a number of these are food service clients that sell products into companies that you have heard of, like McDonald's, KFC. And uh, that leads me to our next client, which I'm going to talk about a little case study today, and that is Henny Penny. And uh, I've got a little story to tell you. And so we're going to start back at the very beginning with uh, a chicken, a little girl, a clown named Ronald, and a cow. And it all does come together, I promise. For the client, Henny Penny. And you might wonder where in the world did they get the name Henny Penny, and we'll explain that in a minute. Henny Penny makes hot, equipment for food service organizations. And that's a, one of the specialties of the work that we do, is we do work with a number of food service uh, marketers. And uh, this particular manufacturer makes equipment that you would see in a McDonald's or a Chick-fil-A or a Wendy's or a KFC. Uh, the fryers that um, the, um, the French fries are cooked in, uh, holding cabinets, uh, pressure fryers, where things like the Chick-fil-A sandwiches are cooked in. Those are Henny Penny products. So these are just a few of their products. Chick-fil-A sandwiches, I don't know if anybody's hungry. Lunch is great, but dinner is quickly approaching. McDonald's french fries. A little background. Uh, I'd like to give you a background about our relationship with Henny Penny and then how we got to where we got to on this campaign. Uh, how many of you ever seen the Eiffel Tower? Okay, good. number of you travelers. How about... The Golden Gate Bridge, that's in the States, so that might be okay. A few more. The Golden, uh, or the, uh, yeah, St. Louis Arch. Um, how about the Taj Mahal? Has anybody seen the Taj Mahal? Anyone? A couple of hands, maybe? Yeah, okay, good. How many of you have seen them made out of French fries? This was Henny Penny's campaign before we became engaged with them. And you see comments or uh, headlines like, confidence is well engineered, innovation can take many forms. And the Taj Mahal, what does world-class frying innovation look like? You're looking at it. These were branding campaigns that Henny Penny and their previous agency had worked on. And uh, they were moderately successful and they were certainly attention getting if you build something out of french fries or tater tots perhaps, maybe mozzarella sticks, I'm not sure. Um, you're gonna get a little bit of attention. But they came to us and they said, we need to do something that's a little more product focus, a little more product benefit focus. These brand campaigns are good, but we've got to make something a little different. And we really want to focus on product benefits. And why would someone want to buy a Henny Penny product? Um, the Taj Mahal is interesting, and the fact that we make all of the foods that were built, that you were used to build the Taj, build the Taj Mahal, is interesting, but it doesn't help sell the product necessarily. So, the strategy. We said, there's a big money story here. We want to tell the money story because we think it will resonate with your customers. That oil you see those french fries gurgling in there, 
that's actually the most expensive part of the food here. The food is not expensive. The product itself is a one-time cost to buy the fryer, but a huge part of the day-to-day -day operation of this particular piece of equipment is the oil itself, and by token, the electricity that's required to heat the oil. So we did a little brainstorming for the client and said, okay, we're gonna come up with a way to make this point. And we started sort of on a continuum of we'll just talk about the financial benefit a little bit all the way to the other extreme, which is we're gonna hit you over the head with it. So we started out with this idea, and you're gonna see a little bit of our, um, our, our thumbnail sketches here. Uh, the secret of the perfect nugget, and this was actually an idea where it would be a tip in and you'd peel back and you would actually learn these things as you tore back different pieces of the, uh, of the ad. And one of these things is we're going to talk about the fact that you could save 40% of your oil cost. Remember that very expensive thing here. 40% of that cost can be saved by switching to a Henny Penny fryer. Uh, the next idea was more fries per gallon. Thinking gallon of oil, more fries. And there was a story to be told there. We thought, well, you know, what if we made the road out of fries? Uh, back to the Taj Mahal, the client did say, you know, we really like the continuity that we've established where we're showing food pictures, so is there some way we can incorporate the food into the ads so that there's, there's, there's a continuum here and it doesn't seem like a sharp, abrupt stop? And so we said, okay, well, well, we'll see what we can do. And this was one of our thoughts here. And uh, our third one, and uh, it took us a little while internally to realize that we'd completely messed this up, but um, this is just a thumbnail, so you can make those kind of mistakes, right? Uh, divide and conquer, except we put a percent sign instead of a divide sign. But anyway, divide and conquer your competition because you're gonna save so much money, your competition is going to be left having to charge more in order to keep up with your productivity. So, uh, we actually created these ads for the client and said, here you go, what do you think? And so we created the truth behind the perfect tender more fries per gallon, and uh, one of our poor art directors spent hours trying to make fries look like they actually belonged on the road, because you know you can't really find a picture of fries on a road. And uh, finally, divide and conquer, and the client said, we love it, we love all three ideas, we gotta pick one, so um, give us some time. And we said, well that's good, you know, when you're pitching to a prospect, you really want to hear something favorable to you. They liked what we had said. So we waited, and we waited, and we waited, and um, we actually created a couple of other examples for them. Multiply your profits, subtract energy costs, and you can see we're using the food here to make the point and the, sort of this math idea. So we've got this, this colored campaign and we're waiting for the client. And uh, Henny Penny came back to us a couple of weeks later and said, okay, we've decided which one we like. We like the math campaign. The problem is our brand. Our brand colors are black and red. And for a little more variety, black and also red. And we also have some black, and there's another shade of red. So we said, okay, okay, we, we understand. So we'll try and create the ads for you in black. Um, okay, maybe not. That might be a little on the Halloween side. Red, okay, well, that will work. Um, why don't you like the blues and the greens? Well, they said, okay, uh, blue and green speak to the cold side of the food service equipment. And we said, okay, well, what about oranges? And well, we really feel like we need to stay within our brand color. Okay, so here we are. Uh, after a, a few weeks of, of back and forth, we've landed. And what you've got here is an actual ad that we created and less oil, more savings. The problem is that's just one. We had thrown a few ideas out to them and we said, you know, are, are these gonna work? And they said, well, no, not exactly. We need to address what these equations are going to be. Uh, and there were some things we had to think about. What are the product benefits of each of these products that we're going to advertise? What is the math symbol that will best illustrate that product benefit? And then how can we make that math symbol out of food that would be cooked in that product? So it's no good making uh, something that has an onion ring if that product doesn't make onion rings. So we said, okay, we understand. This is a little complicated, but we're, we're tracking along. So we actually had a several hour brainstorming session where we worked on food shapes. So, well, green beans can make, and hmm, and that could, and shrimp could. So the numbers, or the, the, the symbols that we came up with were plus, minus, multiply, equal, greater than, and less than. And we thought, we think we can tell a story about the Henny Penny products with each one of these symbols. And so then it became a uh, fun brainstorming time. What 
food can do what? So did you know you can make a multiplication symbol out of drumsticks or potato fries? Or how about an addition symbol out of uh, kebabs or perhaps out of uh, green beans? Um, apparently you can make nothing out of nothing. Not exactly sure what happened there. Um, chicken tenders can make a greater than sign or is that less than? Sorry, that was too many years ago. Uh, less than actually, isn't it? And uh, french fries. Manicotti can make an equal sign, as can ribs. And onion rings can make an infinity symbol, as can shrimp. So all of these were great ideas and, and it helped us get further and further along the process. So we actually created a series of ads and each ad had a different message for a different product. The one that we emphasized the most was this particular product uh, the open fryer, the kind of thing you typically see when you're looking over the counter at a McDonald's and the fries are, are cooking over there. Um, and that's the one that had the biggest uh, economic savings story to tell because of the, the, the way the technology was built, the um, oil usage was far reduced over conventional fryers. Um, another ad, more hold time equals more savings add more flavors to your menu, and then we told a financial story about how that would be helpful in the copy. Um, the problem after we got uh, halfway down that road was, well, where do we go from here? We've got some ads, and you're happy with them, and they're telling a financial story, but what do we do in order to track what's happening in order to help complete the story? You can only tell so much in an ad. So at the time, the uh, client's website was, um, looked something like this. So if we wanted to direct people to learn more about an open fryer, they would have come to a page that looked like this. Uh, there were discussions underway to solve this problem, but of course those discussions were running in parallel with our redesigning of the, of, of the ads. And frankly, there, it wasn't gonna be solved in time for the ads to start running. So we said, okay, um, Henny Penny, we've got an idea for you. Let's, let's create a microsite for this particular campaign. Some place where we can continue telling the story, where we can encourage people to explore, learn more, where we can get them to think money, where we can maybe provide a little peer pressure to show them that, hey, uh, your friends are doing it, and where they can find their own product. So, here's the ad. And here is the microsite that we directed them to. It opened with this little animation here. And then you click, and there's a giant microsite. You can all see that, right? Okay, maybe not. But it was one giant scrolling microsite, and I'll take you through each section of it. At the top, we started talking about less oil, more savings. These screens would slide left to right, and you would see repeated emphasis about the importance of, of saving oil and how the Henny Penny product would help. Um, you would scroll down a little bit, and you could actually run the numbers right there on the site. So up there at the top, uh, the number of Vats per store, let me read from here, it's probably a little simpler, number of vats per store, number of days between oil discards, you put those numbers in and you click calculate and the screen expands and shows you how much money you could save. And you can see right here, it's a, it's a pretty dramatic number. Um, annual oil savings per store, $10,859. 10 year oil savings, $108,000. And that's just one store based on these numbers here. And so you can imagine, if you happen to own three or four stores and three or four franchises, your numbers would add up very quickly. You scroll down a little further, oh, why trust Henny Penny? So we've got some, some information about the brand itself. Discover the Henny Penny advantages, and we compared them to two other um, competitors and why the Henny Penny product came out on top. Uh, this kind of savings has people talking, and so we have testimonials from people like Eaton Pack, uh, from El Polo Campero, uh, other places where there are definite um, stories here for people to understand, wait a minute, I'm not the only one doing this, this could be something very beneficial for me and my company. And then at the bottom, and you'll notice everywhere uh, you went, there was a little gray box up at the top which says schedule your oil usage analysis. And if you clicked on that at any point, you jumped all the way to the bottom. And you can fill this information out, be connected with a distributor, which we'll talk about in just a moment, and be contacted, and we can track to see what kind of information is happening here. So the microsite was a, was a, a great help 
for us to track and for there to be some place to land when people read the ad in a trade publication and decided they needed to get more information. The challenge. Henny Penny sells through channels, channels that they don't control. Um, Nicole's story about Patterson Dental is great, but there's a little bit of a parallel to, to their situation. They had a single channel. Unfortunately, Henny Penny has multiple channels and multiple distributors that they don't have a specific control over what happens in each one of those channels. So all the selling in the world would be great, except for the fact that they don't necessarily control the end touch point. So channels, not like these channels, channels like these channels, warehouses full of kitchen equipment. And every piece starts looking just like another. And you might imagine that there might be various levels of training of those people in those sales positions at these locations. So we said, okay, we've got to do something else to help make sure that the story makes it all the way through the process, not just through the ads, not just through the microsite, but that when someone walks into a distributor and says, I saw that ad for Henny Penny, can you tell me what's the deal with the 40% oil savings? Somebody has an answer. So we created a kit for the distributors, and it came in this tube, which had the math story on the side. And then when you open it up, it had actual hanging banners that they could put in their distribution center. So you can imagine, there's not a whole lot of decoration right now. So if we're supplying something that they can actually hang from the rafters, well, that's going to be the thing that's top of mind when somebody walks in there. Uh, and they carry the story through. Uh, there are posters that can be hung on walls. Uh, there are postcards that can be sent out. And they have also got the digital file, so they can send their own postcard, put a, uh, a logo on it, take it to their own local printer, and send it to their customers that they call on every week. Uh, the results. So we've got ads. We've got a uh, microsite. We've got some digital ads running as well. Um, and then we've got the distributor pieces. Uh, I've got to be somewhat guarded here in what I say, because obviously this is a company that is still trying to sell these products and um, are, are cautious about what exactly they want to give to their customers. So I'm going to be a little vague. We failed. Um, I'm sure you've all seen a QR code before. Uh, we had tens of thousands of impressions, in, pro in fact, probably over 100,000 impressions in dozens of publications. And uh, the client wanted to put in a QR code. And uh, we were, this was the first time we had really explored doing that. So we said, we'll do that. Um, 136 clicks to the QR code. So probably not the best um, solution, uh, or the best result. However, the campaign as a whole was a success. In only six months, uh, to a very targeted audience, we had over 5,000 unique microsite visitors. Uh, average time on site was over three and a half minutes. We knew that of that, those microsite, unique microsite visits, over half of them, almost half of them, were from the ads specifically. Um, one of the publications ran a survey. Over 60% of the ad readers indicated that they would take action. You can't get much better results than that. And the distributors listed appointments that they were making because of the kit and the materials that were in that kit that was sent to them. Uh, next screen, I'm going to put up a number. It may or may not be the sales result year over year for one of the products that was featured heavily in the ads. Um, but um, it was a very, very, very successful um, year over year sales result for Henny Penny. Uh, in addition, uh, we were honored to be recognized by the uh, B2B magazine, which sort of doesn't exist anymore. It's sort of now part of advertising age. Anyway, uh, as uh, the winner in the print campaign category and as an honorable mention for the microsite as well, and um, as well as being honored by BMA Carolinas last year for the, the campaign. What happened next? You remember I, I referenced this page on the website, and we were able to work with Henny Penny and get them to agree to redo their website. So over the course of several months, we tried to create a website that would help reflect this new attitude. And so uh, just a couple of months ago, we launched a brand new website for them with a great deal of interactivity. On uh, the home page here, there's a uh, exploration that could be done in the home banner. Uh, products slide across the screen, and you can click on any one of these products and see more. There's actually a navigator that allows you to say, well, I don't know why I would want a Henny Penny product, but 
um, I'll, I'm happy to learn more, and so I fry products. So you click through, or I roast products, or I service products, and you can click through and learn, get right to the section of the site that does what you want. Uh, the particular products page, a great deal of interactivity, including a little game over on the side where you can actually experience how much time you can save um, filtering your oil using one of the Henny Penny products. A resource library where you can search the entire site and there's this one place, one repository for all the information that you could find about any product that Henny Penny has, including white papers, testimonials, recipes, that kind of thing. And there's a little chicken. This chicken makes an appearance a couple of places throughout the site. Um, again, this is a, a relatively boring industrial stainless steel product, but how can we make this approachable? And this is where our story comes full circle because on the company history page, our little chicken makes an appearance um, right down above experience our brand story. And the brand story walks through where it talks about how Henny Penny got its name, about how Chester Wagner founded the company back in the 50s, how he needed a name because he was having difficulty frying enough food to keep up with his Sunday uh, chicken crowd at his restaurant. Um, he made a product couldn't come up with a name, was reading his son's favorite bedtime story, which happened to be Henny Penny, and hence the name of the company was born. So our chicken makes a complete circle reappearance. Uh, B2B advertising, yes, we need to address the fact that we're selling equipment, that we're selling services to a B2B audience, but these pieces of equipment are being sold to, sold to human beings, human beings who have emotions, just like you and I do. And so we definitely feel wherever possible, let's speak to one of those emotions, whether it's a story about the company, about where its founder came from, whether it's a story about how you can save a whole bunch of money using a product and appeal to that, um, to the, the desire to make a better profit. Um, it's all about telling a story to another human, not just uh, pounding your chest about the superiority of your product. So, thank you very much for your attention. And, uh, May I challenge you to find a way to tell a story when you sell B2B products.